In this lesson, we're going to pull all of our comps together to create one clip. So in our last lesson, we're able to finish up our third clip here. And now we're going to come to our, our project panel and we're going to click this little button to create a new composition. Or you can come up to the top and make a new comp up here as well. This will be our main comp. And for our frame rate, 24, 20, 1280 by 720. And for our duration, we're going to make sure that that is 9 seconds. And let's just hit OK. So now we have our main comp down here. And we're going to grab our layers or our compositions and just drag them out. So we have the first one that we did. We're just going to bring that down and drop that out there. So then we're going to go to the end of that, the end of that comp. And you can use your page up or page down just to kind of put your indicator right where it's supposed to be. That way, if you just grab the second clip, which is the Reuben, we're going to bring that down. If you hold shift, then I'll put it right where it's supposed to be. And then we're going to go down to the end again, hit page down until we can see the black frame. And then we're going to grab the skateboard Los Reyes and bring that out. And just hold shift. Just drop that right out there. Awesome. Let's hit a hit the zero on your keyboard and take a look at our RAM preview. So we have all three of these awesome clips running together. And we're not going to have any kind of transition because that would kind of take away from that that cinematic feel. If we had a transition, then it would feel more like a PowerPoint or something where um, you know, they might start to second guess whether or not this is real footage. And the whole point was is to create this illusion. So everything looks great. Some things that we can adjust though are we if we take a look at our saturation. So we have this layer here, his really red shirt. And it looks like that there's just a little bit of uh, brightness and contrast that we can adjust uh, for the rest of the clips. They can just kind of make them all match. So for the second clip, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to go to our color. And we're going to make some adjustments here. So how about let's go to hue and saturation in our effects and presets. So that is under color correction. We'll double click on that. And we're just going to bump up the saturation just a little, just to kind of match that other clip. So I I'm only brought this up to about 17. And then when we compare them, they just have that same feel. And we're going to go down to this third clip. And let's select that layer. And we'll double click on here and saturation as well. And we're going to bump up the saturation for this one. So as soon as I do that, you can see that like it's really starting to look more like those other clips because without it, if you can click this little button, you can see like it was almost like brown in the background and with brown pants. So when we bumped up the saturation, then we're able to kind of really bring out the, the red and the pants. And then you can see the skateboard here when we turn that off like that, that red really wasn't popping, but now that we bumped that saturation up, then it really matches the reds that we have in the rest of the footage. Awesome. So now that we have our our saturation bumped up and we have our clips all run together, then we can do uh, one more thing that, that might help tie all these together. We can add just a little bit of a vignette um, just around the edges of our video. So let's go ahead and we'll make a new shape. So we're going to make a, a new shape layer. And this will be a rectangle. So let's just double click on the rectangle to add that to our layer. But for our fill, let's make sure that it is not brown. Let's make that black and hit OK. And then we're going to grab the rectangle again. And this time, though, we're going, to, we're going to grab the... Actually, you know what? Let's grab the ellipse. That's what we'll do. And what we want, though, to happen is that we want to create a mask when we add this. So that's this little button right here. So we have that shape selected and we're going to come up to almost the corner and we're going to go ahead and mask that out. And you're thinking, well, this is actually just a big circle oval thing in the middle. Well, no, because we can come down, take a look at our mask down here. You can see in that shape layer and just hit inverted. And then we're going to open up that mask and we have this mask feather that we can adjust about like that maybe a little less. So about like that. And let's just take our blending mode for that layer. 
So you can toggle that switch. I'm going to turn that to multiply, which is a little further up than you can see. So I'm going up and then almost to the top, there's multiply. But I'm going to take that opacity and bring that opacity down. So it's just the edges that I want there to be just a little bit of a vignette just to kind of tie all these three together. And so you can see when I turn this off, the vignette off, that, I mean, it still looks great. But when I turn the, the vignette on, there, it's just something about the cohesiveness of now these three clips just look like they, they all came from the same place. So now let's go ahead and take one more RAM preview and just really enjoy this awesome footage that we've just made. Totally believable someone might think that we have like super awesome camera that we're able to create these high speed uh, clips with but in reality they're just photographs that we took and we're able to add these effects to so that brings us to the end of this lesson and the end of this course so i hope that you've enjoyed uh, working with these stills and you, know, you can you can see that there is a lot of work that that you might have to uh, put in as far as pulling these these images out of a still just to kind of create that illusion that the background is, is a nice uh, solid piece and the, the able to create that movement. And so I hope that you're able to take these principles and use them in your own projects to create some awesome high speed looking footage.